Hello everybody, we are back. Did you miss us? Welcome to episode 34 of the Differently Wired show. Good to be with you all again. I am, of course, your host as always, Maximilian Danger Derrett, your friendly neighborhood Simpsons kin. And joining me as always, I, why? I, okay, I keep telling myself every week I'm going to come up with a new intro for you, but I keep forgetting. Nevertheless, he is the man who has the skills to pay them bills with his glorious, glorious PhD. He is John Tucker. John, what's happening? I'm enjoying the weather. We still have a tail of the summer here on the south coast of Canada, and it's kind of nice. And I'm enjoying the show already. Yeah, it's, it was especially humid today, which was kind of mm. weird because the last couple of days, it's okay. I, I just a little bit of an aside. Um, the room that I stay in, for whatever reason, it's the one room in my house that doesn't have any air circulation in it. So whenever it goes slightly above 21 degrees, I start to sweat like Niagara Falls. And then That's whenever... where I am, Niagara Falls. <laughs> Close. Right. But so it co- it compensates for everybody's sweat glands. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and whenever it goes below 21 degrees, my hands start just... I can barely feel them. It, it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. Not at all. Like, literally, I, I need to wear gloves, even though it's like I can go outside and it's perfectly hot. But whenever I'm inside, it just... It's like hmm. I, it might as well be winter. But anyways, that's not what... You guys don't care about that crap. Um, anyways... Uh, anyway, uh, just before we get to the main stuff that we want to do today, I just want to do all the usual stuff that you guys are used to. Facebook page, got one. Link in the description box below. I know some of you haven't liked it. Why not? Why not? It's, it doesn't hurt you. I know you have a Facebook page. Come on. No problem. Discord server. Uh, last time I checked today, I think we're at 693 members. So if any of you haven't joined the Discord server yet and want to be the 700th member and want to get all the accolades that come along with it, which is mainly just the adoration and cheering <laughs> on of people in the Discord server, I mean, like I, like I, I would hope that would be enough for you. Uh, if you want to be, uh, if you want to receive that, uh, make sure you click on the link in the description box below to join the Discord server. I, I obviously have. Uh, Talked about how supportive and kind everybody is uh, to people that are on the spectrum or have mental health issues. Uh, everybody is there. It's always a very positive community. And also, you know, you can join there if you want to uh, discuss gaming-related topics, movie-related topics. There's text chats for all that. So, and also, uh, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, I started a new series called The Silver Lining. It's basically a a compilation of a bunch of positive stories that happened in the past week. Uh, and the intention is just to sort of elevate people that might be going through some stuff right now. Um, what's interesting is that the first two videos I did got north of three and a half thousand views. But the third video I did, I guess the YouTube algorithm didn't pick up on it because it's only got uh, 1,100 views, it, it, which is strange. So if you guys haven't watched it and, uh, you know, you know somebody that might um, be feeling down in the dumps and might need some uplifting make sure you uh, go and share it with them there it's one of my more recent videos you can find it by just scrolling back in my history uh so with that out of the way uh, let's get to the main uh crux of the show today so for the beginning of the show today uh we have some questions that we have to get to in regards to adhd see last week we did discuss the subject of adhd um However, because it was sort of a broad topic and, you know, a lot of people deal with it, a lot of people sent in their questions, but we just unfortunately didn't have any time to get to them. So today we are going to be addressing each of them one by one. We got six questions lined up. If for, for whatever reason you sent in a question uh, I, and we didn't get to it, I, I'm pretty sure we got all of them. Uh, but if we didn't, let us know by uh, just sending in an email to maxsterrett at yahoo.ca and that way we can respond to it after the show. Um, and also, after we're done answering these six questions, I just want to let you guys know that uh, there's going to be a special announcement, an announcement that's very important regarding the show and the channel in general. So you definitely want to stick around for that because it, it concerns all of you. Um, but anyways, before we get to that, oh, let me just take a second to say hi to all beautiful people in the chat. Cross Ray, Shy Violet, Sean. Dead Day Fly Lily, Stranded, Duffer, Emerald Queen, Vagabond, Alina, Darth Escar, Jesse, Pigman Dan, what's good? Make sure you put all your yeehaws and highs on the screen so that can be uh, kept in the annals of 
YouTube forever. Uh, Magic Seahorse, there we go. Hey, Rickety. Rickety's the man. He's my, my chief moderator. He's been doing God's work on my server. Uh, anyways, before we get into the mailbag questions, I just want to remind you guys, if the, you do have a question that you want to send in to be a part of any future mailbags, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is send it to the email that you see on screen, maxdarrett at yahoo.ca. It can be related to the topic, or it could be something that's entirely personal to you. It can be related to autism or any other type of mental health struggle. We want to hear from you. We want to discuss it. We want to direct you to any resources that you might require, offer you the relevant advice, so that way, you know, you can feel that you're not alone and you can go on living a happy, productive life just like anybody else in our society. So, with that out of the way, let's get to the very first question. And the very first question comes to us from Lance. And Lance writes, Hey Max, I was wanting to go on the call, but that won't be possible for a while due to my school schedule. That's all right, dude. I will try to summarize my situation in a condensed manner, though I'm bad at it. The last two or so years is just a drag into the dust of life and a void of free time. I am now in a really busy school schedule life. My two issues now are, one, I have been so busy in life and riddled with commitment anxiety that I'm now not sure of who I am, what my passions were, what I'm good at, and now just feel characterless or without any skill. I was a guy who did stuff like drawing, music, though I never really committed to anything, gardening, and some more trivial stuff such as learning about local history or folklore. I can't really commit to anything now. It feels like... It feels like... Number two... I'm now aiming to major in forestry, but academia has obliterated any interest or passion I had for working in this environment or the subject in general. Forestry is either backbreaking work in the woods or management office work that sounds boring to me. Though it sounds kind of interesting, I just am not interested. Oh, you okay there, John? Okay. I have no interest in the science field either once I realize it's not at all about what I imagined as a kid. Lab work sounds terrible to me since I hate working in lab in college. Also, the education is hard as hell. It will make me go into calculus and chemistry eventually, and this already sounds like an awful idea. But I've switched majors so much, still having completed general slash community college, that my family has become frustrated, as I have. And you can imagine how that goes. I have a lot of people in my family that have dropped out and sort of failed that I now have this huge responsibility it feels like hanging on my chest. I'm very sorry about this letter being long. I've just been depressed and need to get this off my chest. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for sending that in, Lance. And don't worry, uh, compared to some of the emails I've gotten in the past, yours is definitely concise and to the point. So don't, you did a good job. Um, so it seems like the main issue that you're dealing with right now is sort of figuring out and being honest with yourself about what it is that you want to do. Um, this is something that everybody deals with to varying degrees. There's some people <laughs> that are in their 60s that still don't know what they want to do. Um, but it, what you really sort of need to do, do right now, just to, obviously the most important thing that you got to do is be honest with yourself and figure out what you want to do. But also, you know, when you do that, it will have the side effect of uh, not having your family draw, drive you crazy. You have to be honest about what it is that you enjoy doing and what are the things that you do in your life that you find yourself devoting your attention to and what you can find yourself devoting your attention to for long periods of time. And that way um, you can find yourself working at these things uh, without it constantly dragging you down. Because at the moment, it seems like you're just... Uh, choosing majors and seeing what sticks sort of like just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what will stick and nothing seems to be sticking at the moment now unfortunately based on what you've told us uh we we can't really judge much about what would be ideal for you you said stuff about drawing and music uh, i don't know like how much of a passion drawing is to you right now or like what you've done in regards to building a portfolio maybe that's something that you want to try pursuing um but uh, like the reason why I'm harping on how important it is to find something that you enjoy doing, regardless of um, its present or future financial utility, although that is important, is because, like John has said, um, once you know, if you're on the spectrum and you're trying to figure out stuff like this, uh, well, hold on, let me back up for a second because I'm not sure he actually said anything about being on the spectrum. Did he, John? No, no. actually. Okay, sorry, uh, sorry for making that assumption. Um, well, regardless, if you're currently in this state, regardless if you have ASD or not, it's something that it's the one thing that should be your focus at this present moment. Like when you agree, John? Yeah, uh, this is a very thorough uh, 
um, an authentic looking note from Lance. It, it really seems to characterize quite a few of the clients I see coming. And when you have so many interests and you're very bright and you try so many things, it can be overwhelming and hard to nail stuff down. So the one thing he has not said anywhere in here at all is which of those interests, Lance, which of those interests could be your best contribution to others? Like, which, what thing can you do that would bring help, joy, whatever, not to you? That's one thing. So I'd say that could help you find purpose. Okay, if this particular activity would be most useful in the world, then that's a good reason to pursue it. But the other thing you haven't done is, okay, you haven't taken care of others, but you also haven't taken care of yourself. But what I'm not seeing here is you stepping back from all these concerns and having some time for gentle engagements with things you enjoy. And I'm also thinking of exercise. I'm not seeing exercise here. It seems like you need to do something that will, you know, make you uh, sweat and get tired and feel and feel like you want to go to sleep. I mean, I know I've said a, a lot of different things about this, but it's a, it's a. You've got a lot of talent. You've got a lot of possibilities, and you need some ways to like select what it is you want to do. And I think what you want to do needs to be connected with what is good to get done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, like the best that we can really do right now is offer general advice. Like, obviously, I agree with everything that John just said. Um, you you got to get yourself into a healthy enough state of mind first so that you can have the proper uh, the proper tools in order to be able to decide what you want to do for yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to be sort of in this persistent, hazy mess where you're just sort of going through life uh, directionless, and that's not good for anybody. So what I guess we recommend at this juncture is just um, do like the general things that John recommended. Maybe email us back and let us know like what are the things that you enjoy after a, a little bit of introspection. And then we can go from there and offering some more tangible advice because uh, like even though what you sent us was good, it's just um, in regards to you know, offering more, we can't exactly do that at the moment unless, John, there was something else you wanted to offer. Mm, no, although uh, one good thing about what he has done is he's decided he doesn't want to do some things. So that, that actually is helpful. Mm -hmm. That will steer you away from wasting your time at calculus and chemistry and the like. Yep. So even though it sounds painful, to go through the process, once you shut the door on that area of interest, you're, you're, it, it helps to push you toward where you want to be. And it sounds, you sound like more like art than science, from what you've said. Yeah, because like, I, I agree, forestry sounds awesome, but then you realize what it takes to actually major in that field. And mm. then, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. So, yeah, w once you, you sort of shut yourself off from the things that you've already done, like John said, more... Thing, like things will become a little, just that little bit clearer in terms of what you want to do and then make a list like make a list of the things that you want to do do a thorough research or, or potentially want to do do thorough research into the degrees that are offered make sure that everything is in line and then pursue it um, but yeah anyways uh, we, we would love to hear back from you Lance if you have uh, anything else you want to add in terms of the things that you uh, do enjoy all right with that out of the way Moving on to the next question. And the next question comes to us from Pierce. And Pierce writes, Hi, Max. I'm writing to you about the subject of today's podcast, ADHD, and thought I might write a bit about my own diagnosis. I was diagnosed as a child with ADHD. The South Park episode on how kids are diagnosed at the time was not far off. However, it was later changed to ADDI, or Attention Deficit Disorder Without Any Hyperactivity, and the I standing for inattentive. I believe because of the ADD, I, I, my autism was more difficult to diagnose due to my underactive or limited communication while in person and my lack of focus when I do communicate. I have always been curious how these two diagnoses might interact or affect an individual. Having both autism and ADD or ADHD, does it offer any strengths like Asperger's slash autism, or does it become a double negative? I believe both have helped me create artwork so 
creative artistic tasks could be one area that this dual diagnosis might excel in. When I was a child, I drew hundreds of houses and dreamed of being an architect. Now my art is more abstract in nature. One con of the two diagnoses is that social issues become even more difficult because you miss even more things due to the lack of attention or focusing on the wrong things. Thank you for the great work that you do, Master Max. Sincerely, Conrad. P.S. Making lists and having sticky notes is a must for ADHD or ADD. Uh, well, I will echo that last sentiment. I actually have a bunch of sticky notes attached to my computer to monitor right now, and they've uh, been uh, mm. invaluable in terms of helping me get stuff done. Um, well, obviously, John has the, the most uh, knowledge when it comes to this. I'll just say one thing very quickly, though. Um, we have discussed stuff like this in the past. Um, your, your general assessment of what it is like to have autism and ADHD is correct. Um, whereas people that don't have autism and ADHD, they generally have their cognition and ability to attend sort of uh, even doubt. Like that what's, that's what makes them the average human being, the average neurotypical. Whereas people like myself who have autism and ADHD, I find that myself along with other people that had this diagnosis had the ability either to focus in greatly more greatly than that of the average human and that is to their benefit otherwise they have the tendency to not focus at all and it's sort of like a teeter-totter just going between those two extremes from time to time uh at least that's been my experience now john i'm sure you can offer a more nuanced take on the whole thing I like that he recognizes that creative artistic tasks could be one area that dual diagnosis might excel in. Uh, actually, combination of Asperger's, ADHD, autism uh, can excel in quite a number of areas. But if there's creative and artistic, then it's probably brilliant creative and artistic. Uh, he drew hundreds of houses and dreamed of being an architect. So that, that is a, an elegant kind of mind. Even though the art might be abstract, it's probably wonderful. So the essential question that Pierce is asking is, is this a, a strength or a weakness? It depends on how you use it. Yeah. It absolutely can be a strength if you will take your strengths. If you want to see it in a dark way, then it, everything, the world collapses on you. But you, that, you don't need to do that. There is actually a book I have in my hand that I would recommend, Pierce, that you get a hold of. It's called The Strengths Finder by Tom Rath, R-A-T-H. You buy this book, I don't know what it is, is uh, 20 or 30 bucks. You fill out The Strengths Finder, then you get a code and you go onto a computer and you find out your strengths. Now, what I love about this book is it's not a weaknesses finder. There are no weaknesses. Everything about what you find out is where you are strongest, and then you go right down to the least strongest thing that you can do. So this can help you pinpoint areas, um, refine areas, and it can also help you find out your tribe, locate people who, uh, who you are comfortable being around. Because that's one of the things that I, that I infer from what you've said here um, about social, is that you need to be around people that appreciate your strengths and don't focus on the other stuff. Uh, quickly, John, can you just uh, repeat what the name of that book is and the author? Yes, Strengths, S-T-R-E-N-G-T-H, Strengths Finder by Tom Rath, R-A-T-H. Tom Rath, okay. I'm just, like I said, I do put sticky notes uh, on my monitor. You can hear this, just me ripping yep. one off. <laughs> I, I have a coach colleague who uses this book in her coaching to help people with addictions. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, I just like I'm currently uh, doing a job search at the moment and doing something like this might be extremely beneficial for me. This is a, this is very good. And it takes like a day to do it or something. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, John pretty much uh, covered that best. Um, I, I guess all I can really say is just echo your love for abstract art. Like I, I do a lot of abstract art myself it's extremely abstract no brush no canvas um moving <laughs> anyways moving <laughs> on to the uh i'm trying to picture that <laughs> uh, i'll picture it along with one hand clapping <laughs> yeah. yeah it's uh d don't try to think about it too much uh it's like it doesn't mean anything you'll go crazy like salvador dali in that one painting of his uh hopefully that answers your question adequately pierced and if it doesn't please let us know and write write us back at, at any time 
um, or feel free to DM me or one of the moderators or listeners in the uh, Discord chat. So we, you know, this is my bread and butter too. So we, we'd love to discuss it more. Uh, moving on to Cross. Cross, I got you, buddy. Uh, he wrote this in. Dear Max, I know it's been a while, but now, how have you been? Uh, I'm okay. Uh, how have I been? Wow, I'm spending a lot more time thinking about this than I usually do. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, anyways, I know recently it's been an interesting time trying to pull everything together. That's, that was a good example of ADHD. And I'm glad everything's working out. So today on the topic at hand, I decided to write you an email in hopes to save time and imparting more information about ADHD. I'd rather not rehash what I said in the always being right video, but I will share more of my experiences and confirmations. Cool. As you know, my father has ADHD, which makes it hard to live with. He's in his mid to late fifties and is your stereotypical boomer. <laughs> is your stereotypical boomer. His dad was in World War II, being part of a tank battalion, and his mom was a party girl of the Great Depression. Really, hmm. a party girl of the Great Depression? That sounds like an oxymoron. But all right, if she. If That's she, interesting. Yeah, the lifestyle his family led was one where his socialization was bought, not earned or given, and his mother never nurtured him. ADHD was not prevalently known in his generation, and by the time his diagnosis came around, he was about 40, 40 years into his marriage. You can imagine the difficulty, the impossibility to change and treat his problems. So I was able to witness as well as understand ADHD in its unfettered state. My siblings, not to mention, my mother had to deal with it. From what I understand, Max, you have ADHD under control and your behavior is monitored. <laughs> no, no. I, well, I, I'm glad that I give off that impression. Uh, at least that's one good thing that I got. Uh, anyways, from what I understand, Max, you have ADHD under control and your behaviors monitored and analyzed to where you are able to correct them. This makes me so ecstatic because my dad is at a state where his brains developed too far and locked in place for him to be able to do that. In my father's case, he's in a state of self-deprecation and trying to do what he can to not make things worse, knowing that it's impossible for him to not screw up. He's taking medi- Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry for laughing a second ago, dude. I just, I didn't really understand what you were saying. Um, he's taking medications to help mitigate the problems, but here's what I've noticed in those who have ADHD. Anger often becomes an immediate panic reaction to those who have ADHD due to meeting a simplistic sense of order or things not going their way emotionally. Those who have ADHD are often very impulsive and become blinded to what's around them and can become tunnel visioned in regards to tasks or people's emotional sensitivities. This can lead to being too blunt in a conversation and talking about something that was hurtful to a person which is considered unimportant in the moment to the ADHD individual or forgetting to put all the furniture back in the house from outside after mopping all the floors come nightfall. My experiences with individuals with ADHD is to always encourage the successes and try to mitigate the feelings as much as you can without harsh criticisms, which is hard since many are tempted to do harsh criticisms. My mother and I always try our best to strive for grace, mercy, and forgiveness in many of my dad's problems, as well as separating those problems from ourselves. Anyway, that's what I wanted to bring it to the table today. I want to know what you think. Is this informative? Is this interesting? Do you feel that this is correct from one side of a coin? Let me know. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I just wanted to say, like, go back to what you said here. From what I understand, Max, you have ADHD under control and your behaviors monitored and analyzed to where you're able to correct them. Well, in regards to what you said about, um, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, you said it on the fourth page. Hanker often becomes an immediate panic reaction. Um, so for me personally, I'm sort of like your dad in a sense where if something around me goes wrong, I do react to it emotionally as far as uh how it comes out i do have a pretty good control on that that's one kudos i will give myself um but on the inside um i think this is more attuned to the fact that i have autism rather than adhd but regardless um whenever something unfamiliar goes wrong it's like i don't know a deer sensing a predator off in the distance, even if it's just like a leaf rustling against the ground, they run away in the opposite direction. That's sort of what I am. But um, in regards to you saying that I do have things under control, um, I, I suppose I'm not impulsive, like you describe your dad. Uh, I think that's good. Um, but anyways, to, to the crux of the email that you sent, uh, like what you were trying to say there, it, it's important to highlight the successes of people with ADHD. I, I, I think that's true. Um, for me personally, John uh, has made this 
his very synced and accurate criticism of me is that oftentimes I don't really see the uh, th my own positive qualities and I, I do tend to be reminded I have the need to be reminded of them and it's not like in an attention seeking way um, it's just you know generally I, I find myself humbling myself too much to the point where it's detrimental um, so yeah I can see where you're coming from in regards to uh, needing to promote the successes of people that have ADHD um, obviously you don't want to go too far to the point where you expand their ego and you make the problem worse but y you can do it while trying to veritably highlight the, the person's strengths uh, so that way they can con continue to uh, do good things in the service of doing good things for other people instead of just uh, them becoming full of themselves. I, I think that's sort of what he was trying to get at, right, John? Sounds like it, yeah. A um, couple of things I would like to pick up on. I, I really like his your um, striving for grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Uh, this is very good to strive for because it's, it, it, it allows things to develop. If a person uh, did not develop attachment as a, as a young person, then it, he doesn't have a sense of safety. There's no safety in his history. There's no real security. So underneath all that anger and frustration uh, is anxiety. And the anxiety is close to the surface. So, uh, and it is one of a banquet of responses. Or one, or anger is one of a banquet of responses. Uh, escape, you know, the fight or flight business. But there is one thing you could reconsider. Uh, and turning back to your dad, you see that his brains developed too far and locked in place for him. That's actually wrong. Uh, we know now with neuroplasticity, with the right kind of coaching and support, you can retrain a brain. And this guy, you're saying he's in his 50s? He's a kid. Lots of time. Lots <laughs> of time to retrain his brain. So, But you do need somebody who is skilled to help him with that. But uh, there is definitely hope. Um, we see people coming who are older than in their 50s, who have made a decision that they want to get their life working better. And, and you can repurpose stuff. It's like, it's, it's magic how neuroplasticity works but one of the one of the uh, lead authors on neuroplasticity is a, a psychiatrist Norman Deutsch and he uh, I think he wrote the brain to change itself or something like that anyway Norman Deutsch he's a, a psychiatrist that no longer practices he's so busy going around the world talking about how you can make brains change themselves there's also a school in Toronto called Aerosmith which is <laughs> devoted to it's really, it's a great little school. and That's, that's uh, the name of it? Aerosmith? Aerosmith. Oh, yeah. how do you spell that? A-R-R-O-W-S-M-I-T-H. Oh, I thought you said Aerosmith, like the band. No, close. Oh, okay. <laughs> but this woman, whose last name is that, had this problem, and she got to work at a very, set, a very specific set of exercises that would help her change her brain. So... She's on the web. She goes around the world talking about her work, and she has a school, like I say, in downtown Toronto that one day I'll, I'll visit. But I, I, I've had clients who've come from there, and uh, you, you can make quite dramatic brain changes once you realize that there's room for hope. It doesn't matter where you are. You can turn the corner, and you can direct your attention towards something positive, and if your dad wants to, he can make his life much happier. And fortunately, he has your mom and you uh, striving for graciousness and so on. And so that could just happen if you uh, take advantage of some of those resources. That's, that's really interesting that you said what you said there, John, about neuroplasticity, because I've always sort of been under the impression that in regards to some things with the brain, once you hit a certain age, that it, it becomes a little bit more difficult to uh, work yourself out of certain habits or thought patterns. Um, in regards to what you're saying here about ADHD and how like even at somebody at 55, it's something that's easy to do. Is that sort of for like the vast majority of people that have ADHD or like how, what is sort of the ratio between people that have a difficult time reorganizing their brain functions compared to the people that you say who are truly neuroplastic? plastic 
you would need an awful lot of research to be accurate in a percentage. And I don't know what the chances are of people that I have never met of changing the brains, but those who come with an intent to do it can do it. True. So here's the thing. It's setting the intention. If you go to a physician and you're comfortable and you trust that physician, and that physician is confident they can help you, you will start to get better before anybody does anything because yeah. of the intent. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that, that, that does make a lot of sense. I suppose even like for those who would have a greater trouble, yeah, you just you need to have that, that inner motivation to make that change. Otherwise, there's really no point in doing it, even if you are more neuroplastic than the average person person dealing with ADHD. So yeah, you're mm. right. Okay. Um, and I think we, we uh, dealt that uh, relatively well. Thank you so much uh, for sending that in Gross. Um, moving on to the final mailbag question. We, we do have two other questions after this, but they came in via Facebook. This is why you guys should uh, like the Facebook page. Um, this last email question comes to us from Dan Dye. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, Dan Thai writes, I saw your recent <clears throat> ADHD Differently Wired video, and I thought it helped me understand how a person I used to be friends with thinks. However, I wasn't quite satisfied, so here's a question. If the two of us feel like polar opposites because of his ADHD and obesity affecting how spread out his interests and mine are, is it best to not be friends since we can't find any common ground? <clears throat> Excuse me. I've heard the phrase opposites attract, but I never got that feeling whenever I hung out with him. Every time one of us was always disinterested in whatever the other talked about. Video games played, shows watched, and even the food shared. When I mentioned how different we are, he immediately accused me of not thinking our friendship being real even though we've known each other for 10 years, adding curse words when he usually doesn't cuss at me too. It might have been harsh of me, but instead of correcting him by saying I do treasure our friendship, I decided that if he misunderstood what I was saying that badly, he shouldn't be my friend to begin with. So that was how we stopped being friends. To go into detail about how his ADHD and possibly obesity affected his interests compared to mine, he was more interested in open world and heavily violent with very little plot- Oh, I, I do- Okay, sorry, let me finish what you were saying there. To go into detail about his ADHD and possibly obesity affected his interest compared to mine, he was more interested in open world than heavily violent with very little plot games like GTA since there was so much to do and not much wait time between gameplay segments because of plot. Uh, oh, sorry, just to be a bit of a, a Debbie Downer when it comes to what you're saying there, GTA actually has a pretty good plot, at least the, the most recent two. But anyways, that's not important. Sorry about that. Um, it's just my my autism. Uh, his favorite topics to discuss are small ideas without room for long discussions, such as video game graphics, fast-paced action, and lewd things. The shows he enjoyed the most were action or comedy-oriented anime, and most of the food he liked eating was strong-flavored, unhealthy fast food. I am the complete opposite of the above. I like smaller games since I don't want to feel overwhelmed by what I could or need to do to play the games efficiently, and the more plot the better because I love watching the characters I play and interact with be alive instead of senseless puppets at my disposal. Many JRPGs line up with this description. Uh, John, in case you don't know, JRPG stands for Japanese Role Playing Game. Okay. My favorite topics to discuss are ones that can easily end up being speeches if I had enough time, and I love it even more when the people I talk to don't cut me off or want to talk about something else simply because they can't focus. These topics are usually game design, trivia, and psychology. I actually don't enjoy shows at all because I prefer interactivity in media, even if that is simply imagination with non-video game related media, such as literature, radio shows, storytelling, songs. Leaving comments on YouTube videos or live streams is how I enjoy those more than movies and TV too, because I could influence how the future videos or moments and streams happen. Lastly, I enjoy mild flavored healthy food because I care about my health more than how tasty it is. Sorry that this ended up being a novel, but I don't like leaving out potentially critical bits of info. You may need to understand my situation. Um, okay, well, first of all, thank you for sending that in, Dan. Uh, it's hard to say whether... In regards to how ADHD affects this, uh, I can only really speculate because I can easily envision a scenario where somebody who has ADHD or somebody that doesn't have ADHD can be in the exact same situation as you are, where you have a friend that has complete opposite uh, interest to you, and but it can either have something to do with ADHD or not. Um, but nevertheless, we can uh, address the thing. Uh, I, I've been in your situation in the past where I've been, quote unquote, friends with people where our, op our interests were 
completely opposing to one another. Like uh, I used to go to university and um, a lot of the people that were there, obviously, because you're um, part of a liberal arts somewhat program. I, I did a radio and television production. And a lot of the people that I was around, they thought differently when it came to political issues, social issues. They played a lot of different games than I did. Um, but nevertheless, you know, you, you got to maintain a good working relationship. So you find a way to be kind to one another. But then after a while, you just realize that you don't really have anything in common. And, uh, it, you know, that's just the way things are. Um, I, I can't like, I don't know. Like, is there something in regards to ADHD that could influence how this happened? Like how, how things worked out between these two? Um, yeah, it could be that his ADHD has him being a little short, a little impulsive. Uh, it could be that he likes those kinds of things that are full of action. You know, some ADHD, uh, primarily uh, hyperactive types, really do like combat. I mean, they really enjoy combat games. And, and if they go to the military, they become good at combat. Uh, so that's not unusual for ADHD, some, some elements of it. Oh. Uh, and in fact, if a person enjoys that kind of thing, then slow moving activities will not hold their attention and they can't attain. But there's something here. It's almost my intuition telling me that Dan wants to be friends with this guy because he goes to such trouble to explain why he can no longer be. Why would he write us a note about this unless there was something about his friend that actually... Um, he wanted to stay friends with him in some, at some level, mm. in some way for. It's like I'm getting the feeling that he would uh, like to stay connected to this person in some way. So exploring that for a minute, Dan, I think you should think about the things that um, you have in common, even though you describe a lot of things that you don't, and you may not want to see him very much but it's a good mental exercise to think about the things. What is it you like about this guy? Because there's something there that you like. Yeah. Because, like, it, and even while doing that, like, I, I can understand, like, having this happen in the first place, despite, you know, how you, you feel about, you know, not having things in common. If, if you can do what John suggested, it can lead to um, you lessening your mental tension, I suppose. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it, it'll be a positive exercise. And it, it, if, you know, th things like if things get better by doing the exercise, maybe you can approach the guy and uh, make amends with with him. Maybe find things that you have in common. And even if you aren't friends past that, at least you'll be on generally good terms so that if you ever come across each other in the future, you'll have Excellent. favorable yeah. interactions. Yeah, the generally good terms is nice because uh, uh, you don't have this like... Uh, Thing hanging around in your head haunting you of whatever but you may you may never become really great friends but i, I want to say one other thing this notion of opposites attract i've never understood that does that mean like a salamander marries a seagull i don't know it's sort of like lady and the tramp i think is what he means I, I suppose uh but i wouldn't i wouldn't take those things that as sayings as things to guide my life yeah uh, you know what they're just often they're often too homogenized and, and too loose in their intent, it's better to actually think about the case in front of you. Yeah, you have to be honest with yourself and how you feel about the situations yeah. as they pertain yeah, yeah. to you. Because, uh, yeah, in my own life, I, I haven't found that opposites attract uh, no. really well for me. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for sending that in, Dan. It was an interesting uh, mental exercise for very. myself because like, it, it, I, I didn't really see the correlation there between ADHD and what you were going through. But then John explained how um, violent video games and competitiveness uh, can have an impact there. And I, I certainly spent a lot of my time playing. <laughs> oh, man, the, the amount of time I spent playing GTA 5 online, it's criminal. <clears throat> It's as criminal as the stuff that you do in that game. Uh, anyways, before we move on to the final two questions that we have for this uh, show, I just want to point out something. And I'm actually going to try something that uh, another YouTuber, uh, a, a very popular one that I'm sure you're all very familiar with, uh, Philip DeFranco. Um, I noticed that there are 59 of you watching live right now, and there's only 27 likes. 
So, as Philip DeFranco says when he wants to get people to like his videos, like this video, or I, I'm going to throat punch you. <laughs> That's what he says, and apparently it works. So, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I'm not actually going to throat punch you, but, you know, just like the whole, oh, I, he, you, you know what I mean. I, I'm not, just relax, I'm not advocating violence. Um Hold on, what did somebody just say there in the chat? Max grinded to 100 million in GTA Online. Actually, what happened was when I was playing the game earlier on when it was out, uh, there was this uh, money duplication glitch, and somebody randomly gifted me like a billion dollars one day, and then I just bought everything. It was dope. Uh, (laughs) Anyways, we don't, uh, unfortunately, have the text for these the last few questions because they came in or were brought to my attention uh, just before the show started. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the live chat up while we read them. Uh, So, you know, I can make you guys famous for the next uh, few minutes or so. All right. So this first question comes to us from Freya. And Freya writes, Hey, Max, I recently discovered your channel after watching your video on Asperger Meltdowns. Nice. I was wondering if you could give me some advice. I recently, October 2018, got diagnosed with Asperger's at the age of 15. So you're probably 16 now. Uh, This diagnosis didn't come as a shock to me. My mom, who is a teacher and has worked with many autistic children, has been telling me for years she was certain I was autistic. She knew from a very early age there were a lot of red flags and certain habits I never grew out of. Although I had known for years, being told, having it confirmed and written on paper, has affected me. I'm really struggling to come to terms with this diagnosis. All throughout school, I'd never really fit in, had little to no friends, and at one point was suicidal. I couldn't wait to leave school. Here in England, you graduate school at 15 to 16 years old. However, in my last year and a half, I had a group of friends, and due to now finally fitting in, I started to pay attention in classes and excelled academically. The problem is I have now left school and graduated. I got diagnosed during my last year of school, and even after the diagnosis, received no help. I never received help during my whole school career. Just as I started to love school, was completely used to it, and my routine, it has been ripped away from me. My school does offer a college, however, a lot of people suggest it is not the right thing for me to do. The only reason I really want to stay at college there is to not have to suffer the change of going somewhere else. Do you have any advice on dealing with change as it is inevitable? Freya. Um... I asked her to take the lead for the majority of the questions. John, do you want to take the lead on this one? Well, I kind of like the idea that Freya wants to continue. In- Part of her wants to do it because it's safe, but she's beginning to enjoy learning. She's beginning to make friends. She's certain she's swimming in a, a, a place that's working for her. So I don't know why people are saying college is not the right thing. I think they're wrong. You know what? I think college probably is the right thing. Maybe that's not the college. But somehow or another, everything that you have said is pointing to you uh, continuing school and in, and enjoying because you're still quite young. You can learn a lot of stuff in school. I mean, I started my last degree when I was almost 50. So you can stay in school for a while. And it's fun. It's fun to learn when learning works. Yeah, it's fun to learn once you know what it is that you like to do. Yes, uh, definitely. But, but, but once again, it's just like in regards to a lot of emails that we get, we, we need to sort of uh, get a little bit more information from you in regards to what it is that you enjoy. So that way we can uh, sort of recommend something that would be right up your alley. So that way, like you said, you can excel academically. Because for, for me, uh, like I, I had a terrible time with school. Um, it was only when I inadvertently found out what my interests were, which were philosophy and psychology, that I I found myself just reading textbooks in my spare time because I just found them so fascinating. So maybe if you could write us again in the future and um, uh, let us know what it is that you'd like to do, then maybe we can offer you more concrete advice. But uh, yeah, like John said, if you do enjoy learning and you do it well and you know what it is that you want to do, then trust me, you'll be unstoppable if you figure that out. Trust me. My my word is my word is as golden as my skin. All right. Um, <laughs> so John, you have to leave at seven fifty, right? That's right. Okay. So we just have time for that last. Oh. Um. Well, actually, I I wanted to read. Oh. Like I still have the announcement that I have to make, right? Oh right. Yes. Yeah. So, so I figure, you know what? The the one question that we have left is from a woman named Aurélie from France. Um. Orly, if you're listening, I will respond to you just after the show, but I want John around to hear this because uh, I, I do have something that I want to read off to you guys 
and I want John to be around uh, to listen to it. So I, I got to get through it pretty quickly, but it's very important. This is the announcement that I was referring to uh, prior to the show going live, um, and it has to do with the future of the channel and the future of the podcast. So uh, settle in. I, I do have to uh, detail a bunch of difficult things, but I hope by the time I'm like, I will end what I'm about to say on a positive note, so don't try to let it bring you down too much. But I do need to be honest with all of you. So, um, anyways. I'm not doing very well right now, guys, lately. Like, I, I know it might sound like I am based on, you know, the, the jokes that I'm cracking during the show or, I don't know, the, the interactions that I have with you on Discord or on Twitter, but it's, it's not really the whole story. See, I'm currently in pain physically as well as mentally like the mental stuff i'm sure you're all fully aware of but the the physical pain is a relatively new development i don't know if you guys know what the sag nerve is it's the nerve that runs down both your legs um it's currently caused me a lot of pain it's something that affects me on a daily basis and this is compounded on top of the fact that i've been experiencing back pain since 2016. Now, granted, the, the pain in both respects has been relatively managed in terms of their intensity as well as the medical costs that pain incurs. However, the pain overall is sufficiently intense that it has impaired my ability to feel any happiness as of late. See, when I do feel happy, it is the form, it's in the form of like an instantaneous delight. It's like a piece of candy or something that, like a video that I view on YouTube that is unusually charming, uh, something like that. But aside from that, my default state of mind is just one of general numbness with a semi-daily bout with despairing thoughts, like maybe every other two days or something like that. Now, obviously, the mental and physical pain are the source of this, but what is the primary suspect that is sort of feeling this pain the most? Well, I, I can't lie to you guys, it's, it's YouTube. Now, before I go into greater detail, I want to be clear that I'm eternally grateful to you guys, to my regular viewers, my Discord moderators and listeners, those who have donated money to support my channel, and of course, everybody that's watching the show live. I honestly, John, like, I talk about this all the time, and you know how true this is. I honestly have one of the best fan communities on YouTube. Beautiful crew. Almost all the comments and ratings I receive are positive. Anytime I have messed something up in a live stream or in a video, everybody is forgiving. Everybody. Not a single person deviates from forgiveness. Plus, I am so proud of all the people in my Discord server for being so welcoming and supportive to newcomers, especially those who are dealing with mental health struggles of their own. So when I say that YouTube is the primary culprit behind my pain, it has nothing to do with any person who watches my videos. All of you are immaculate. Rather, it's the working conditions for smaller creators on this platform. That is causing me a great deal of personal stress. Allow me to illustrate to you all what is currently what it is currently like for me as a YouTuber, as well as other YouTubers that I have spoken to. In order for me to put out a good standalone video on my channel, whether it's gaming related or autism related, it takes about a week of work in order to do a good video. Now let's take my video, like I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the video game for The Last of Us. I did a video on that game recently. Over the course of a week, I have to record footage for the game download extra footage from the internet if necessary, record dialogue, edit and compress the dialogue, and edit the video together. Now this is all fit in alongside my other minimum wage job as well as other responsibilities. If I do have free time during the week, it is, I, I, might, be, I might just watch a movie or something. I, I don't play games for fun anymore, or at least I haven't for several months. Like, I tried playing Bloodborne today. I'm not sure if Eliza is in the chat right now. She can verify this. I played Bloodborne today for the first time ever, and I had a terrible time playing it. Not because I think the game is bad, but because I find that my mind is persistently focused on playing games for the channel. If I'm not playing games for the channel, my mind devolves into the state where I beat myself up for my lack of financial independence and lack of character. And even when I do play games for the channel, the time and effort I put into the video is almost never met with sufficient reward. Like, going back to what I was just saying about The Last of Us, sure, like, the video... I, cur I think it currently has 73,000 views last I checked. That's pretty good for my channel. However, what caused that view count was the YouTube algorithm picking up on it. The way YouTube functions today is different from how it functioned in the recent past. In the recent past, YouTubers could pick up organic traction based 
relatively on the merits of the content produced. Today, the algorithm seems to feed solely on popularity. If your video has a catchy title and thumbnail and gains a certain number of views within its first few days of release, that video will be placed in the recommended feeds of millions of YouTube users. If, however, your video does not reach that initial threshold for views, then your video gets lost in time, like tears and rain, as Rucker Hauer once said. For example, while my Last of Us video did relatively well, my two videos on Hellblade, one of which included a, 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 a franchise that I'm kind of popular for covering, which is Silent Hill, like I made a comparison between Hellblade and Silent Hill, doing those two videos took much more work than the singular video I did on The Last of Us. Um, but despite that fact, both those videos have less than a fifth of the views of my Last of Us video. Now granted, many of you might say, well, Max, not all your videos are going to be that popular. Well, that's true, but however, even with my video for The Last of Us, the total ad revenue that video got is slightly more than the revenue I get after working 10 hours at my minimum wage job. So to summarize, the compensation I am receiving for my video work is nowhere near appropriate to the amount of work the videos require, and the YouTube algorithm is not built to reward hard work. Rather than promote content that could enlighten people, that could help them understand their problems and work towards a better future like we're trying to do here, the algorithm rewards pre-established iconic media corporations like ABC, NBC, and CNN. It rewards salacious, half-baked political commentary that fuels ideological, racial, and gender-related tensions. It rewards influencers who primarily do makeup vlogs or pretty girls that play video games. For me, whenever I try to advocate for people with mental health problems, my streams and videos get demonetized. Like this almost on a... On a, every single time we do a stream for the Differently Wired show, th the videos lately have been getting demonetized right off the bat, and any revenue that I could have gotten is lost. So all of these circumstances have led me to this perpetual state of unhappiness. I don't enjoy playing games anymore. I can't attempt to do anything fun without feeling enormously guilty. And what is worst of all is when I read the beautifully written comments and emails you guys send me. I no longer... <sighs> It's so sad to say, I, I no longer feel any positive sensation when I do it. And I, like, don't get me wrong, I appreciate it on a logical level. Like, I respond to you guys by saying thank you because it's the right thing to do. And, like, I, on an instinctual level, I do appreciate it. To do, like, I want to thank people for taking the time to write these comments and these beautiful emails that I receive. But unfortunately, it's just my brain isn't hardwired to respond positively to that sort of thing at the moment. My brain is currently hardwired like an addict. I only feel normal when my view count and subscriber count are rising, you know? I have, and I've seen several of my favorite YouTubers reluctantly taking mental health breaks from YouTube or outright quitting. Like, I would name names, but I don't want to do so without their permission. So, with all this being said, you're probably wondering how my current state of health will affect the channel overall. Am I leaving YouTube? Well, for the moment, no. I'm not. Sometime in the near future? We'll have to see. What I am certain of is that, starting today, the Differently Wired show will be on hiatus until October the 1st. I also don't plan on releasing any new videos until October the 1st either. I need to not only focus on my mental and physical health, but I need to look for higher paying jobs. Unless I'm in a healthy state of mind, I can't help others. Unless I have a revenue stream that can financially support me, then I can't focus on videos. Between now and October the 1st, I will actually be enlisting John's help as an ADHD coach to help me with the job search. If I can get a job that pays me a living wage and also doesn't offend my autistic sensibilities, the process of making videos wouldn't depend on views or revenue. I would just do the videos. If any of you guys are aware of any opportunities in the fields of journalism, audio, or video production, or at mental health advocacy, please let me know. I'm willing to relocate, too. If none of you are aware of such things but still want me to continue making videos on gaming and like all that stuff, there is another way you can do so. There is a reason why I said October 1st as my return date. In the next three weeks, while I am looking for greater employment opportunities, I will be finalizing the requirements for my Subscribestar account. Now, in case you guys don't know what a Subscribestar account is, it's like Patreon, except without the, you know, unethical business practices. Like Patreon, Subscribestar offers you the ability to support me financially while also gaining rewards for doing so. Now, if you guys uh, take a look at your screen now, in case you guys haven't been uh, looking at it directly, hold on, let me just get the graphic up. 
Uh, John, by the way, you can leave now if you need to get to uh, your uh, client. Uh, yes, I have to take off because you indicated to me how you're going to set it up. So that's great. Uh, we'll chat, of course, uh, very soon. Okay. Thank you so much, John, and uh, have a good rest of your night. Thank you. See you later. All right. See you later. Sorry, guys. I'm just uh, bringing the gra graphic up. So what you see on screen right now are the tiers I plan to offer you guys. Uh, these include the long-requested audio versions of the Differently Wired show, uh, a Minecraft server, access to my gaming profiles for multiplayer, uh, movie nights, which I plan to do weekly where we just gather together and watch movies, uh, and more. I'm, I'm also willing to add certain rewards and tiers if you have any suggestions. Uh, and by the way, in regards to the Minecraft thing, um, to sort of sweeten the deal, if you guys uh, join the server and build your creations, I also plan on uh, going into the server and recording what you guys have uh, created so that I can actually put them in the background of some of my videos. Or I could do standalone videos on uh, Minecraft. And also I will be uh, adding some of those legit ray tracing, uh, well, I, I'm getting a ray tracing graphics card pretty soon. And also I'll be adding some shaders to make your creations look really nice and really professional. So anyways, once I come back on October the 1st, I will be releasing one last spate of videos, uh, like weekly, all the way until the end of the year and likely into the next year for a month or two. And depending on my employment status, how many of you support me financially, and how well my videos do overall, my future on YouTube will be decided. I do have greater plans too if things go well. I, I See, I do want to keep doing this. I, I do have a lot of cool ideas that I want to see implemented. I want to create a greater support network for people with autism and mental health, you know, one that actually helps. I want to start a separate channel where the stories of video games, new and old, can receive preservation and academic dissection. But in order to get there, I need your financial support. So if you are willing to support me on Subscribestar, let me know by posting in the live chat or in the comments below. Let me know what tier you would subscribe at. Let me know if you have any suggestions for other rewards. And if, uh, like I said, if you know of any other job opportunities, please email me using the address at all one word, at yahoo.ca. Now to conclude, and I know this has sort of been a long thing, but I, I am finishing right now. I just want to reiterate this. You guys are all amazing. I would not be where I am now without all of you. I desperately want this community to grow and thrive. We, we have such this, this amazing sense of camaraderie. Like I honestly, I'm being completely honest when I say that this is the best community ever. In my many years online, I've never encountered a community of people so devoid of toxicity and so bountiful in kindness and support. Now, though I did say that I don't feel much positive sensation at the moment, I understand on an instinctual level how much this community means to you and to me. I respond to as many of your comments and questions as I can because of that. Lord knows the internet needs more communities like this, and a good place to start is making sure this one stays afloat. So, that's pretty much all I had to say. Um, I just We have about a minute left before we normally end, so I just wanted to take a look at what you guys are saying in the uh, live chat. Let me just bring that up. <sighs> Let me just uh, see how many people are watching right now. 59 people. Um... Yeah, I, I, I kind of do need a hug. But listen, guys, I, I do want to continue this. I do want to help you guys out. You guys have meant so much to me. And I want to return the favor in as many ways as I can. It's just uh, things are kind of difficult right now. And we need to help each other out. So... I w oh, I will say this before we conclude. Um, even though the Differently Wired show won't be back until October the 1st and I don't plan on uploading any videos, I might upload one uh, sometime between now and October the 1st, uh, depending on how I'm feeling. Um, I still do want to receive stories from you guys for the Silver Linings show because uh, just reading those stories, it it's the one time with doing YouTube that I actually do enjoy doing it because reading all these positive stories it really uplifts my spirit so 
that might be the one thing that stays the same. But in regards to differently wired and the regular standalone videos, um, you won't be seeing them for the next three weeks or so. But on top of that, um, I have been, like, like I said, you know, there are other people that I'm friends with on YouTube that have been taking mental health breaks uh, from YouTube because, like me, they found it so unrewarding and they don't know how to uh, make things better for themselves beyond just burning themselves out. So what I'm trying to do is reach out to them and say, hey, if you want, I can take your videos and promote them on my channel, and then you can take one of my videos and promote it on your channel, so that way we can help each other out, some subscribers each way. So if you guys know any other YouTubers that are currently experiencing something like this, like I know a couple, but if you know any more, please let me know about them, so that, that way we can uh, turn this currently a difficult period into something positive. All right. Uh, so before I conclude, I'll just uh, see what some of you guys are saying. Don't feel obligating that's obligated that's burning you out. Josie M says, take your time and we'll be there when you are in a better situation. Josie, thank you so much. Really, I, I do appreciate it. I do. John Booker, take this much needed break and we will be here October 1st. Alina DeHaller, housing support, I would definitely donate, but I can only spare two. That, that's fine. I I appreciate even that, just with all my heart. Thank you, Alina. Um, what province am I in, Syria? I'm in Ontario. I'm in Ontario, Canada. Uh, Shy Violet, I love you too. I'm a wizard somehow, says I will probably go for $2. Thank you so much, dude. Honestly. And uh, once again, like for those that contribute to the Subscribestar account, I, I would be more than happy to take your suggestions on anything that uh, can be improved in terms of uh, the tiers, like any other rewards that you might want to see added, um, or even just recommendations in regards to the videos that I do or the podcast moving forward. <laughs> Adam Mangold says, don't forget to party hard. Um, also, uh, one other thing that I, I sort of just want to get a feel for if how many people are watching this right now 61 okay so 61 people are watching right now uh if you play minecraft uh please let me know just by posting in the comments below i, I i'd like to get a feel for how many people uh play um also if you do play minecraft do you play the java version or the windows 10 version that way i know um uh i know which one to get oh and also if I create a server, would you like it to be survival or creative? I'm betting it's probably creative because I know, like, when I say Minecraft and autism go together like bread and butter, the reason why is because people that have autism and play Minecraft, they build these crazy, crazy creations, and I want to see stuff like that. Um, Adam Mangold says, I play on Xbox. Nathaniel says, Java version. Okay. A Camp Endo Confricus says, is it good if I donate through YouTube? I just don't want to sign up right now and subscribe. So, yeah, yeah, that's totally cool, dude. If you want to do that, there's also a PayPal option in the description box below, whatever works for you. Um, and also, when you do it, make sure you like let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see changed or added in regards to the channel in the future. Because I, I, like, if you take the time to donate, I, I want to give you the uh, appropriate amount of appreciation that goes along with that, which is all my appreciation, you know? Uh, Straight it says survival. Yeah, so yeah, just let me guy let me know guys if you use Windows 10 or Java and if you prefer to have a creative server or a survival server. All right. So with that out of the way, um, I haven't eaten since around noon this morning, so I got to go have dinner. Um, thank you guys again for being supportive. Um, in the time that I'll be off, I will be around the Discord server more, so you guys will be seeing me. Oh, oh, and I also forgot. Um, if you guys have uh, any questions. I will be in the general voice chat in the Discord server after the show is done. Um, if you'll just give me like five minutes, I just need to go heat up my food, and then I'll be back up to talk with you guys. Um, so yeah, uh, the general voice chat in the server. So with that all out of the way, I'll see you guys in a few weeks. Uh, I love you all. Thank you so much for all your support. And until that time comes around, remember, stay yellow.